You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. To you. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? Arbitrator. Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It comes to my mind right now a conversation of spiritual direction I had with a businessman in Indianapolis many years ago. I'm here 17 years, so it could have been 19, 20 years ago. And one thing that was abhorrent to him was how his colleagues uh, were uh, all going into retirement in their mid to late 50s. They had made a bundle, had worked hard in their businesses, and they were off to Florida to live a life of retirement. And it's come to my attention relatively recently that there are studies showing that the greatest human creativity happens in your 60s and 70s. That's very interesting, but it makes a lot of sense because once you reach that age, you may not have the physical capacities to lift Olympic sport weights and to win a Nobel Prize, or maybe you would at that age, that's when maybe you get it, by the work you did maybe in your 30s and 40s. But what you do have is a lot of experience and a lot of counsel to give to others. It always surprised me why young people come out of uh, college and immediately they become consultants. I, I tease them and I say, what can you consult? You know nothing. <laughs> How can you give advice? But obviously they can do analysis of things and provide a lot of insights into patterns of things and actually do provide a lot of insights. So that's wonderful. But imagine that after seeing so many things, so many experiences of life, and even myself, I would say that in this conflict here in the last couple of weeks, because of the in-depth conversations I've had with Palestinians, uh, Arab Israelis, and with, um, with Jewish Israelis, um, people that have gone through many different really rough experiences. I spoke to one man recently, and in a particular conflict, uh, actually 50 years ago, he had, in the battle, he was a soldier, and his arm was broken, and the leg was broken, and a bullet put a hole in his helmet, in his forehead, and he survived. And that wasn't the worst of the battle that he described to me, and I won't go into the details because it's too gruesome. But uh, it's an extraordinary man, because I, I didn't know that about him, and uh, an absolutely extraordinary man I admire very much. Also probably would categorize himself in the category of agnostic, maybe atheist. And uh, it's amazing the amount you learn when people are under pressure. About ourselves, when we're under pressure, and when peoples are under pressure, what comes out? 
And so after living a life of 50, 60 years, then we have such a treasure to share. And the idea of this guy building barns to sit back and relax at the beach with the biggest TV screen possible and the best refrigerator with all the best selection of beers and drinks and, and delights to enjoy. And that's the aspiration for the last 10, 15, 20, 25 years of their life. How can that be according to the plan of the talents? And in a certain sense, it's this life of well-being that actually breeds laziness, it can breed greed, it can breed a lot of things. Now, there are a lot of people that go into retirement and they have a different focus. They get involved in voluntary things. And this particular man I was speaking had started a major um, outreach for the faith education that's still going in his city. And it has a, a good reach in media. So this is... Um, we can accomplish so much, we can do so much. And it's not about what we do really, but it's about our whole person being given to do good. And it could be within the realm of the family. Little kind things, good deeds, but not to be, how do we conceive life? Do we conceive life self-centered or God-centered? Enjoyment or mission? Development of all the gifts we have are just lounging around looking for some nice indulgence of pleasure. And that's a huge difference in a person's life. But that's also the environment where people become virtuous or become lazy and greedy and selfish. And that's the perfect ideal ground for a lot of weeds to grow and for sin to happen. Because our lives are given in relationship. We're called into life by God. And this call becomes very explicit for Abraham. And Paul continues to meditate on Abraham's call. He seems so fascinated considering the person of Abraham and his faith in God. And there's a beautiful line in here that should be a great inspiration for us, I think. Abraham did not doubt God's promise. Rather, he was empowered by faith and he was fully convinced that God that what God had promised, he was able to do. He was fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. And if God gives us our talents to reach maximum development, then we have the grace to do it. And in another way, Paul says, you know, it's um, when God gives the, the task, he gives the grace to do it. God never asks us to do something beyond our abilities. And yet he asks us always to go beyond what we think our abilities are and brings us to another level of development of our persons. And that's amazing. It's a very different aspect of life. And we, this isn't so incompatible for asking for the forgiveness of sins, because forgiveness of sins is we also need for a mission, for lack of effort uh, to take care of people, for lack of effort to learn more, for lack of effort to engage others uh, in relationships, friendship, kindness, forgiveness, reconciliation, um, God is coming to his people all the time. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people. And he's coming to his people to come to all of humanity. God is coming to us all the time. He's calling us all the time. And he's asking, our eyes are focused on that relationship. And then our whole meaning of life changes. And that's one of the great experiences for you volunteers. Because a volunteer comes and doesn't get a paycheck. Sometimes I might have to sleep in a crummy house. Um, and share a room with bunk beds. And, and some people like prefer different temperature, air conditioning, no air conditioning, and all the rest of it. And there's some people making noise. You don't have your own independent private royal palace where nobody else interferes except you, the king. And so this experience of volunteering is actually a great release from being tied to our own private palace mentality where nobody disturbs us and we have the exact measure of everything we like. That's totally different than saying, I'm going out into this world in which I'm put today and I bring my talents to play and I look whom can I serve with the talents I have received. It's really very vocational, very missional. It's very much the, um, it's a, a freedom. It's a maximum of freedom. It's a maximum of development. How good God is to call us to this life.
Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.